Hi, my name is Manjot Singh. I'm an enterprise architect with MariaDB. I'm here to talk to you about sharding uh, and how to do it with uh, the MariaDB platform. So there's a few types of sharding that we'll talk about first. Uh, there's traditional sharding, which is ID-based sharding. And ID-based sharding is basically, hey, our table grew too large. So let's say you know we have ID 1 through, I don't know, 10 million. Uh, so we need to slice it up. That's partitioning. But then we want to shard it, where we take each partition and we put it on its own individual database. So each of these is on, on its own server. Uh, and traditionally, what you would do is, is have your application know, you know, uh, one through a million is on server one, two million through three million is on server two, uh, and so on. Um, so that's the traditional ID-based approach. The next one is uh, functional sharding. And functional sharding is really easy for some applications that are planned ahead. So let's say you, know, you have a database that's just grown too large due to lots of tables. So let's say you have a table for users, uh, maybe a table for posts, and another one called billing. Uh, what you would do then is put each one of these tables on its own node separate. Uh, and this is ideal if you're not joining across these tables. And you know, these tables might have their own child tables, so you would move that entire environment of that table over uh, to, to each of its own servers. Now, the third one is, is sometimes called schema per customer or schema per, uh, per function, uh, you know, schema per anything really. Uh, and this is where you have a database. So let's say you're a web hosting company. Uh, and each of your domains uh, for that company has a database associated with it. So you might have, you know, myhost.com uh, database. You might have another one for your host uh, and whatnot. And so as these schemas grow, uh, they may outgrow the server. So let's say you have 100 of these. What you can do is take, you know, a few of them, put them on one node, and take another handful and put them on another node. You may get to the point where, let's say, my host is so large, you give it its own server. Uh, for database. Uh, so this is, this is, these are the basic approaches. So how do we use these approaches with the MariaDB platform in a way that we're not having to rewrite our applications? Well, there's two options actually. The first one is MaxScale, which is our shard router. MaxScale allows you to do the functional and the schema per uh, customer routing using the MaxScale shard router. So basically what it does is a filter. It'll say, well, you know, your select from, you know, my host dot, dot user, users um, goes to, you know, node one, node one. Um, and so what it does is it'll look at these uh, in the queries and, and know where they go. Now, the other approach is storage engine based, and that's using our sharding storage engine called Spider. What Spider does is it's massively uh, it's able to, to basically access many different underlying databases and not store any on the spider node itself. So what you would do is you would build out a spider, uh, spider node. So let's say this is your primary database. You'll build out another spider node for, let's say, you know, IDs 1 through uh, you know, 1 million, and then another spider node for IDs 2 million through 3 million. Uh, and what Spider does is it will go down in a parallel fashion, pull the data, join it, and then return it. And it can actually join on other storage engines. So let's say you have other smaller tables on this primary. That Spider table will actually pull from all of the underlying Spider data nodes, join them across these other storage engines, and return those to the user. So it sort of obfuscates between MaxScale and Spider this type of sharding work that can be done. Uh, and traditionally, you had to do within your application and know where to address the data. Now you can actually you know, partition across servers. You can move different functions to other databases. Uh, you can do cool things like maybe you have some compliance needs where data needs to live somewhere else. Uh, but now you can pull it back into uh, you know, your primary database uh, so that you're not having to make major application changes. So hopefully that's, uh, that's been a good introduction to sharding for you, and it helps you to plan your application out. Thank you.